Welcome back. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says he's committed to taking action to make peacekeeping operations safer and more effective in today's challenging environments. He made the statement in a special message to mark the International Day of the United Nations Peacekeepers, also celebrated on May 29th every year. The day is organized to pay tribute to all the men and women who have served and continue to serve in UN peacekeeping operations. The theme for the 2018 International Day of UN Peacekeepers is 70 years of service and sacrifice. On May 29, 1948, the United Nations Security Council authorized the first United Nations peacekeeping operation, the UN Truce Supervision Organization in the Middle East. On the 70th anniversary, we express our gratitude to the more than one million men and women who have served under the UN flag saving countless lives. We honor the more than 3,700 Blue Helmets who paid the ultimate price. And we pay tribute to the 14 missions working around the clock today to protect people and advance the cause of peace. This year, I will spend the International Day of United Nations Peacekeepers in Mali to express my solidarity with colleagues facing high casualties and enormous volatility. As we recognize a legacy of service and sacrifice around the world, I am also committed to taking action for peacekeeping, action to make our operations safer and more effective in today's challenging environments. And we also are committed to reinforcing the important role our forces must play in promoting human rights and addressing sexual exploitation and abuse. United Nations peacekeeping is a proven investment in global peace, security and prosperity. Together, let us pledge to do all we can to enable that mission to succeed. Thank you. Meanwhile, the UN has warned that worsening violence in some parts of South Sudan is putting thousands of war-weary civilians at risk and endangering the fragile peace process in the world's youngest nation. Thousands of civilians have been forced to flee to the bush in opposition-held areas to escape the fighting that has flared up in unity and Jongole regions. Despite several agreements and ceasefires, fighting has rumbled on in South Sudan with barely any break since the civil war erupted at the end of 2013, just two years after the country's independence. Well, a conference aimed at targeting or agreeing on a roadmap to reunify Libya is being held in Paris today. The meeting will bring together Fayez Siraj, who heads the United Nations-backed unity government in Western Libya, and the militia leader Khalifa Haftar, whose Libyan National Army dominates the east of the country. France hopes the two sides will commit themselves to hold nationwide elections by the end of the year. But the International Crisis Group, an organization that works around the world trying to prevent conflict, says negotiating with individual leaders is likely to be counterproductive without a broader consensus. The UN-backed conference aimed at uh, securing parliamentary and presidential elections in the North African country, if possible, by the end of 2018. Let's get more on the story from Libya. A senior lecturer of international law at the Nassau State University joins us in the studio, Mr. Chukwemeka Eze. Thank you for joining us. So what are your expectations from this meeting in Paris? My expectations is that the meeting will just be one of the series of meetings that will lead to stability in, in Libya. But this meeting may not guarantee stability in Libya. A group of 13 military councils and brigades in Western Libya have actually issued a statement saying that the Paris Initiative does not represent them. You know, is this stance likely to derail the talks in France? Yes, very much likely, because uh, the interests in Libya that have been invited are four. The, we have uh, Ajila uh, Sela, that's uh, Saleh, that's the head of the House of Representatives in Tobruk. You have uh, Al Sharaj, the Prime Minister. You have Khalifa Haftar, and you have uh, Khalid Meshri. These four represent very broad interests, but they don't represent all the interests in Libya. So the 13 military councils in Western Libya, definitely they are not represented. 
and that would derail the talk. So looking at the political and security instability in Libya, how feasible do you think elections will be this year? I think uh, France is just looking for a, a pseudo-legitimate government it can deal with in, in terms of its uh, economic interest in Libya. If, I, I don't think it will help in the stability of Libya. There is no constitution, there, and uh, their proposal is that the, the referendum for a, a constitution could happen before or after. But definitely we know that if elections will be conducted this year, it will not, this time will not be enough to conduct a referendum before the constitution. And if you conduct a referendum after uh, the election, that means the implication basically is that the government in power will impose its terms on the people and many of the people will rebel, so the crisis will continue. Well, the Libyan situation is just like, you know, that of Iraq, you know, when the, the two countries fell into chaos after the demise of their long-term leaders. So do you think that democracy might not work for all countries? I agree. Democracy will not work for countries. But, um, and uh, many of these countries where they you recall the impact of the Islamists in Libya now. So religion hasn't taken the center stage. It's difficult for democracy to work where people try to bring so much religion into politics because whichever government in power, those outside it will claim it is not good religious enough to continue in power. So uh, basically I doubt uh, for so many years, especially with the experience under Gaddafi, it will be difficult for Libya to practice democracy in the next 10 decades. What do you think you know, France is trying to gain from all of this? France, Total, we know it's a French company, has bought 16% stake in another oil company. In the Libyan Waha, it's, a, it's an oil company. So they are entrenched in the oil sector and they want to make much out of it. And recall that between 1944 and 1951, France was uh, the colonizing power in Libya. And recall also that the actual country that colonized uh, Libya is Italy. So France is trying to play a key role so that it can upstage Italy when it comes to getting natural resources from Libya. So, and that is, if Italy is not carried along at the end of the day, uh, France may not really succeed. Right, so uh, the United States, you know, played a key role in ousting uh, Muammar Gaddafi, but it seems to be taking a back seat in all of this. Is President Donald Trump just not interested? Yes, yes. I think the US doesn't want to uh, get entangled when uh, Italy and France yeah. are, are pushing forward. Record these two have uh, definitely, uh, they have relationships, direct relationships with Libya. And record that a former French president was indicted for receiving campaign yes. funds from Libya. Yes. So with all this relationship, the best thing in the circumstance for United States to take the back seat. Because if, if it takes the front seat, it will tend to upstage France and Italy. Right, thank you so much thank for your you. thoughts on that. A senior lecturer of international law at the Nasara State University, Chukemeka is a thank, thank you for you. your thoughts I'm on grateful. that. Right, let's move on. A family of a small boy dramatically rescued after dangling from a balcony in Paris, France. I've uh, said their thank you to the Malian man who saved him. The four-year-old boy's father, who had left him in their flat and gone shopping, faces charges of failing to look after his child. Migrant Mamoudou Gassama, who scaled four floors to pluck the child from danger, will be given French citizenship as an honor from the presidency. French President Emmanuel Macron personally thanked him and gave him a medal to, for courage and said he would also be offered a job in the fire service. Well, that's Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jockey Rogers.